When it comes to office communications, there are a lot of rules which you aren't going to learn from any book or from any teacher at any school. You learn them on the job in the office. And a lot of uh, them relate to how communications are structured. So I'm going to briefly talk a little bit about email and also touch on some of the functionality so that you are able to get the most out of email at your own job, whatever that may be. To start off with, uh, the to field of an email should always uh, address the person who is most important to respond to an email. Uh, if you're expecting a response, if it's instructions for somebody, then you should use to. However, if an email is only for someone's review and you're not expecting them to take action on it, you don't need a response or you don't need them to do something, then you can use the CC attribute or carbon copy. Carbon copy is a throwback to some old office language. Uh, it used to be that if you wanted to have a copy of something, well, copy machines didn't exist. So you used special paper that was impregnated with some carbon and you pushed really hard with your pencil or your pen and uh, what it was is two pieces of paper put together and anywhere that you pushed really hard the other page behind would have an exact copy of the first page. So uh, a carbon copy is just an exact copy. There's also what's called blind carbon copy. And shorthand for that is BCC. Whenever I am sending a message to someone, I send a blind carbon copy to myself uh, because I use my inbox as a way of keeping track of my, my own tasks. And so if an email was important for me to take action on it, then it's in my inbox and I'll hold on to it until I have completed that action. Uh, after that, I delete it. Or if I don't really need to reference it later on or remember anything, I'll delete it. If you're using IMAP email, which is something that I discussed in a previous video, then you will have uh, multiple boxes <coughs> available in your inbox. And you can use that for organizing as well. Uh, for example, I can have a box for things that I want to do later. And I could have a box for things that are important right now. Uh, for example, I have one box for things i got to follow up. i got Google Alerts. i got plans for later, stuff I want to read later, tasks I need to do right now. And you can do whatever you want yourself. Uh, however, it's going to be really good if you can keep your inbox as close to empty as possible. Uh, because that helps you to uh, notice new things, respond more quickly to them, and, and above all, just stay organized, which is important. You need to prioritize things. If uh, everything is just only in one box, well, it's a little bit difficult to prioritize. Okay, moving on. Uh, when you first create your email, uh, the first line should address everyone that is a recipient, unless there be CC. So uh, this one I'm sending to two people uh, named Stephen and JJ. So I say, hello, Stephen and JJ. And uh, that's important to do because it helps all of the recipients know everyone else is being addressed. Because some people, they get an email and they don't look very closely at the top or what's called the header when they open it up in their email client. It's good for them to understand uh, who else is part of a conversation. Uh, 
by understanding that, they will know if it might be more appropriate to use the reply function or the reply all function. If you use reply all, then you continue the conversation while sending your response to everybody involved. Uh, next is a little piece of formatting. Um, of course, uh, the first person that you should address should be the person in the to field. Anytime that I address a specific person uh, and a part of the message is specifically for them rather than for any of the other recipients, then I call them out. Start out by uh, showing their name, set it in bold, follow it by a semicolon. Here I've used some links. Uh, that's something that can be pretty useful to do. Uh, in most email clients, you can just highlight your text, can hold down Control, press L, and you can hyperlink your text. It's just like making a web page if you've ever done that before. And of course, you can do pictures as well. And uh, that's important to remember because the best communication includes examples and pictures. As a general rule, show, don't tell. A picture is worth a thousand words and you want to keep your emails concise. If you're ever sharing a file that's on a uh, local network, then give the full network path. And also, if there is going to be an attachment, then mention that very specifically. Say, hey, I attached something to this message. Otherwise, again, a person might not pay very close attention to the header of a message, and they might not notice that you had sent them an attachment. Lastly, be sure to avoid big walls of text like this. It can be difficult to navigate or to respond to. Break up your paragraphs. And don't be afraid to double or triple space between a change in ideas. Also, uh, supposing that, say, this part of the text is related to this, I can indent that. That makes it a little bit easier to see that all of this is an idea. It's related. Be sure to follow what your teacher taught you in school, such as when you're starting a new paragraph, introduce it. When you are exiting a paragraph or uh, a long section, then provide a summary. That will allow people to quickly scan through a document, uh, reading either the first or the last sentence in any given paragraph, and uh, quickly understand what that was about. It helps with navigation. It also helps them to remember what was written. If you receive an email from someone and you are going to respond to it, your response should be at the top, not at the bottom. Also, do not delete what they sent to you. Uh, keep that. Quote it. Uh, as you uh, send a message back and forth, it's 
uh, very common that a person might delete old copies of the message. Uh, but later on, they might need or they might want to refer to what was said previously. And if you're deleting old uh, words or content out of the messages that you receive, it's going to be impossible for them to do that. One of the most common and useful features of using uh, the carbon copy attribute is for making it uh, more visible to your supervisors when you're doing something. Uh, if someone needs to understand or if they benefit from uh, seeing that you're taking action on certain things or doing something that they asked you, uh, the CC allows them to see that. Um, not only that, but remember that email includes timestamps. So a person can see the date and the time. They're able to see that, yes, you are being productive around the office. Uh, you're handling communications and uh, reporting on tasks, whatever.